Lesson 11, prayer. Prayer seems to be one of those things that people turn to when they don't know what else to do or to say. A tragedy strikes, and as the victim's family is interviewed by Matt Lauer of NBC, he concludes his interview with the common phrase, you're in our thoughts and prayers. People, especially in our American culture, seem to almost make prayer a religion in and of itself, with very little thought of who it actually is that prayer is supposed to be directed to. I once heard an interview of a pop music singer who, when asked if she was religious, responded, No, I'm not very religious, but I do pray a lot. Well, it seems like people like to talk about prayer. Do they really even know what prayer is? In this lesson, we ask God, to whom our prayers are to be directed, what prayer is, and how we are supposed to use it. So what is prayer? Let's look to God's word for God's definition of what prayer is. The psalmist prays in Psalm 19 to God, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart talk, spoken or unspoken, with the true God. Prayer comes from a heart of faith. It can either be vocal, that is spoken out loud, or spoken in your mind as you think your words. Most importantly, prayer needs to be directed to the right place. It needs to be addressed to the true God. Prayer not directed to the true God is like sending a letter without an address on it and hoping it gets to the intended recipient. Prayer needs to be addressed to the triune God of the Bible. To pray to any other God of any other religion or a God in general is sending your prayer without an address. That leads us into the next question. Why only can a Christian pray to God? Remember what the natural relationship between God and man is because of sin. Isaiah 59 verse 2 describes that relationship. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. These words remind us that by nature there is a separation between us and our God because of sin. There is a barrier of sin between us and our God. You might picture it like this. The barrier of sin hangs over the head of every single person by nature. We might try to send a prayer to God, but that barrier of sin blocks those prayers from being heard from our God. They are infected and blocked by sin. But remember what has happened to that barrier of sin for the Christian. Jesus reminds us of how only we are granted access to God in John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Only through faith in Jesus is that barrier of sin removed and we and our prayers given access to God the Father. Now you might picture it like this. The barrier of sin which naturally separates us from our God is removed through faith in Jesus. For the Christian Sin has been removed, which means that we and our prayers now have access to God. That's one of the reasons that many times you hear our prayers end with, In Jesus' name we pray. Those words remind us of the only reason we have access to God through prayer is because of Jesus. We'll talk about another reason to close our prayers with that phrase later on. Therefore, prayer is not a right for every person. Prayer is a privilege for God's children who through faith in Jesus have had that barrier of sin removed. So how often does God want us to make use of this privilege that he has given to us, his children? Look at Ephesians chapter 6. The Apostle Paul writes, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Notice how often the Apostle Paul encouraged his fellow Christians to make use of prayer. He says, on all occasions. Well, we might na naturally think of times of hardship or sadness as natural times for going to the Lord in prayer. Every circumstance in life presents us with reason to go to the Lord in prayer. Just look at all the different types of prayers a Christian is invited to bring to God. Listen to the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 6 when Jesus' disciples wanted instruction on prayer. This then is how you should pray, Jesus says. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. You recognize those words, don't you? We usually call these words the Lord's Prayer. Our prayers are certainly not limited to these words, nor does this prayer possess any special power over other prayers that we might offer to God. These are topics, or we might even say thought starters, for things that we might include in our prayers. Now did you notice that the majority of the requests are spiritual in nature? But God does not limit our requests to the spiritual. He also knows that we live in a world where we also have physical needs. And so God also wants us to come with our physical requests. At the end of this lesson, part of the homework is to read through Martin Luther's explanation that goes along with each of the requests in the Lord's Prayer. Make sure to take the time to read through these. They remind us of things that we can think about as we regularly pray these words so that they don't just become words that we thoughtlessly repeat. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, we have included for us two different types of prayers. Listen to Paul's encouragement to his fellow Christians. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone. We offer prayers of thanks. Too often our prayers become filled with just requests. But when the Lord gives us what we requested, how often do we return to thank him? Plus, the Lord always gives us something for which to be thankful for, as all things come from him. We also offer prayers of intercession, that is, prayers offered on behalf of others. We pray for Christians and non-Christians alike, that the Lord give them what he knows best for them. Finally, look at Psalm 50 to see the Lord's invitation. Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you will honor me. God invites us all to call upon him when we find ourselves in need. These are called prayers of petition, prayers for our personal needs. God always grants deliverance when we find ourselves in trouble. However, that deliverance may not come in the form or at the time that we would like. Sometimes God's deliverance comes in giving us the strength to endure the difficulty in our life. Sometimes, maybe even until the time when God takes us home to heaven. Sometimes God's deliverance comes in taking away the difficulty in our life. And sometimes God's deliverance comes in taking us away from the difficulty by rescuing us home to heaven. God also instructs us in how he wants us to pray to him. We look at John chapter 16. Jesus says, In that day you will no longer ask me anything. I tell you the truth, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. What confidence the Lord gives to us as we approach him in prayer. We make our requests in Jesus' name, that is, trusting in him as our Savior. Remember, that is the only reason that our prayers are heard. Now look at 1 John chapter 5. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. We make our every request according to his will, that is, seeking that God's will be done. If we are going to pray according to God's will, then we need to know what God's will is. And that requires study of the Bible, where God reveals his will for us in the various circumstances of our life. Lastly, we look at James chapter 1 to see the attitude that God wants us to come with. James writes, If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord. We approach God in prayer with a humble confidence. We recognize that we are approaching the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords when we go to God in prayer, so we go with humility. But that humility does not mean that we should not come with confidence. Why would we think that God would answer the prayer of the person who says, Well, God, I know that you probably won't do this, but I thought I would ask anyways. Think of who you are bringing your prayers to. 
Your God certainly has the power to answer your every prayer, as unrealistic as it may seem at times. However, remember that we also trust our powerful and loving God to answer our prayers at the time and in the way that he knows is best for us. His answer may not be what we wanted or even what we thought was best. But remember that our God knows all and loves us perfectly. That brings us to this point. Evaluate the following statement. A person prays repeatedly for something, but it does not take place. They conclude that God chose not to answer their prayer. What do you think? Well, we know from what we read in the Bible that God does hear our every prayer. Sometimes his answer is, no, not right now. I know that would not be good for you. Well, did God answer our prayer? We might be tempted to look at the circumstances and say, no, but in reality, he did hear and he answered our prayer. It's just that it wasn't the answer that we asked or maybe hoped for. There are other times when the Lord might answer with, later. For some good reason, that we might not see until much later on, the Lord wanted us to wait. Again, we can always know that whatever his answer may be, it is always going to be for our very best. This is a little acronym, A-C-T-S, that might help us to assure that we have a balanced prayer life. That is, making use of all the different types of prayers the Lord asks us to bring to him. A, adoration, means praising and worshiping God in joy, remembering all the great things he has done and promises to do for us. C, confession, recalling and admitting our sins to God, asking God to forgive us, trusting Jesus has forgiven us, and asking for his help to fight that sin. T, thanksgiving, thanking God for his forgiveness, making us his children, and all that he gives to us and others throughout this life. S. Supplication. Asking that God supply our needs and the needs of others. So when are some good times throughout the day to help you get into the habit of praying if not already doing so? In the morning as you begin your day and then at the end of the day before you go to sleep, uh, before meals is also a good time for us to thank God for the visible blessings that he is placing before us. Meals are also a good time to pray because they usually are regular breaks throughout our day that provide us opportunity to think about what has happened and what is coming up next. I've provided a couple of different prayers that we have to use and that are good for us to put to memory. That first prayer is probably the most familiar one. It is the Lord's Prayer. These are called the table prayers because they are often said before or after meals. They might not be quite as familiar to you, so you might want to take some time to read through them in your notebook. The same can be said of the following prayers. Here is a morning prayer that can be said as you begin your day, and here is an evening or night prayer to be used at the close of your day. Many of the hymns or songs that we sing in church can also be used as prayers as well. That concludes our lesson on prayer. Here's a Bible passage to put to memory concerning prayer and God's invitation to use it. Make sure to complete worksheet number 11 before we meet again together. And as I said before, read through Martin Luther's explanation of the Lord's Prayer. I think that it will help you to see just how rich with thought Jesus' words of the Lord's Prayer are filled with. Until then, we'll see you next time. God bless your study of his word.